Hi, my name is Jillian and I'm a watercolour artist, better known as Crafty Fox on Instagram. Today, I am going to be painting the anemone using the flower colour guide as my reference photo. This flower is a very nice five petal flower that is easy for us to break down and paint along. I started with wetting my paper first because I'm going to be creating these flowers using the wet on wet technique. The next thing that I'm doing is I'm mixing up a batch of paint to help me to get started. In this painting, I'm using a square brush by Silver Black Velvet and it is in a 1 inch size. I typically paint using a square brush because I believe that it is versatile to give me a lot of beautiful loose shapes. After I've added in a base of my petal shapes, I also added in some highlights in neon colours. I keep in mind as I shape the flowers that I want to ensure there's enough space for me to add the stamens around the centre. Every time I paint flowers, I eyeball the center to make sure that I have an idea of where I want my center to be. This is so that my flower will be able to be proportionate and also show a sense of direction. Whenever I use a reference photo, I am not painting exactly as I see. Instead, I'm using it as a guide to allow me to understand what the flower shapes are, its direction, proportion, as well as how the leaves and petals fall in the reference photo. While my paint is still wet, I think that it's a great idea to use the lifting method to lift off parts of the paint if I want to indicate that there are some highlights. This method is best when your paper is still wet and the only way to do it is by drying your brush fully and lifting the paint and dabbing it back onto the paper towel to remove away the paint. This allows you to create highlights in your painting and in your flower. I've listed down all the materials that I have used in this video down in the description below. Feel free to take a look at what materials I'm using but at the same time, I want you to use whatever materials that you have on hand because I believe that while you're creating this together with me or as you're watching the process, you too can create beautiful paintings in your own interpretation. As my paper has started to dry, I'm adding on another layer of clean water. This allows me to again use the wet on wet method and then create these soft edges. I'm also adding more water on the top and on the corners so that I can add additional flowers and blooms around the existing flower that I've created. Next, I'm painting a flower that is in the background. As it is further behind, I tend to use a smaller brush to indicate that the proportion has reduced in size. The next thing that you want to consider when you're painting a flower towards the back is that you want to make sure that you're using a color that is cooler in tone. Here, I've mixed some lavender together with blue to give me this purple shade. As I'm using the wet on wet method, I'm also very mindful of ensuring that the consistency of paint is to water on my brush is not too runny. 
This is so that I'm better able to control the paint on my paper and it will not be running and flowing around. I want to make sure that I get the nice soft edges in my painting at the same time that I'm still able to have better control on my paper. The best way to do that is to make sure that the consistency on your paintbrush is pretty thick and is not too runny. This means that you have to take note and eyeball the amount of water that you have on your brush. I'm applying more clean water around the surface of the flowers. This is where I will be adding in my leaves. I usually paint from light to dark, so you see that I'm going to use a light green color and slowly build on my layers as I move on. I am mixing my greens right now and one tip that I have is that I often add a tinge of red into my green mixture. Every time I do that, I'm bridging the gap between the two complementary colours, red and green. We have to remember that because red and green sit opposite each other on the colour wheel, this means that if they are too far apart from each other on the colour wheel, you would find that it's very hard for the viewer to connect and create that harmonious colour palette in their mind. As such, it's important for you to add a tinge of the colour of the flower in your green mixture, just a little touch because this helps to bridge the gap between the colours. While the paint is still wet, I add some darker values into my paint so that there is a variation in colour. I often work from light to dark and that is a principle that I follow throughout most of my paintings. We are just about halfway through the painting and if you are painting along, thank you so much. It means a lot to me that you are watching my video and this also allows me to help you to understand how to break down a painting as well as for me to showcase to you my process. As you're painting and you find that your painting looks different from mine, remember that as you are an artist, your hand and your eye is definitely different. At the same time, we tend to go into comparison and one of the quotes that I want to leave you with that I love is that the flower in nature does not look and wait for the flower next to it to bloom, it just blooms. This is such a great quote because it reminds us that everyone can bloom at their own pace. So I'd like you to give yourself the opportunity to just paint, enjoy the process and whether it works out or not, I still believe that you do learn something from it. At this stage, you would see that I have started to layer. I'm starting with the big flower because that is my focal flower. I've also waited for the paint to fully dry before I add the layers. This is so that I get those crisp sharp edges instead of soft edges. Before we were using wet on wet method which allows you to get those soft and feathered edges. This time I would like harder edges so I'm going in with a dry on wet method. 
while you're painting and you notice any struggles that are coming your way, just keep in mind that this is part of the learning process and if you'd like me to think about addressing them, then I'd love for you to pop in your feedback and comments in the box below. This allows me to get the opportunity to not just showcase to you my process, but also learn from you what are some of the areas that are helpful, as well as the areas that you think I should highlight a bit more in my videos. You will notice that I have not mentioned the ratio of paint in terms of color mixing in this video because my belief is that I want you to try out using the colors that you have on your palette on your own. This allows you to get to know the paints on your palette because sometimes following a certain set of formula while it gives you the opportunity to open your eyes to some colors that artists use it also limits your ability to try out the paints that you already have in your palette. So as such, think about the colors that you have and what you can do with them. Don't worry about following the same colors that I have. On the other hand, color mixing is really something that takes a lot of practice and patience. So I hope that you give yourself the grace, the time and the patience to learn as well as focus on whatever materials that you have in your palette as you are trying this out. I am now mixing some browns to help me with the center. I'm using a Van Dyke brown, but because the colors in my flowers are so warm, I want to give it a little bit of cool color to give it a pop. So as such, I'm adding some indigo into my brown mix and putting it down in the center. In this segment, I do not add in so much details. I want it to be really loose because most of the time, the light is actually falling on the flower center so as such it's very nice for you to think about omitting some details or depending on your style perhaps that's an area that you really want to focus on and create more details out of it so think about the composition and the proportion as well as the details that you like to have in your painting when you are creating that focal point One of the biggest struggles that many artists face when they are painting loose florals is knowing when to stop. Adding details can be very tempting because the more we face our reference photo, the more we start to see details that we could have added into our painting. The important thing in loose floral painting is not about how much detail there is, it's about how much you trust your viewer. Trust your viewer to complete the painting on their own and this is different for every viewer that looks at your art. I'm just going to be adding the last detail here to the last flower. I thank you so much for being a part of this video together with me. And I hope that this video has not only given you the opportunity to see my process, but also learn a few things from it. If you like this video and found that this video was helpful for you, click the subscribe button so that I'll ensure that I'll create more videos like this to help you to not just paint along but also hopefully learn about my process.